This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle, an odyssey station. An odyssey is what you need, man. It's what it's all about. You want to listen to the rock? Get the odyssey app. Or perhaps you'd love to get all the audio that matters to you. Oh, I'm talking about music, sports, podcasts. These things move you, baby. And Odyssey's got them for you. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y Odyssey. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. It's Wednesday, so there's going to be some whacking. Whack it. Let me see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! Everybody do Mr. Wacky out there. Well, I mean, in the uh, comfort well, of mean, your own home, I guess. Oh, Mr. Wacky is going to be busy if everyone's going to do them. Whack yeah. it. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant. We got Scott in Oak Harbor. Scott, are you there? Scotty. What's up? <laughs> All right. Steve, hey, Scott. Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Scotty will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Scott, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Release the whacking. Nice. I oh, like nice. that. That's Whacker. a good one. Which American Idol judge played bass for Madonna throughout her album Like a Prayer? Uh, uh, Steven Tyler? No. I don't know. Pass. The Bermuda Triangle is located in what ocean? Uh, Atlantic, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian. Atlantic, yes. What year in the mid-2000s did YouTube first launch? Uh, 2004, no. 5, 6. 5, yes. Who no, starred sh- opposite of Cameron Diaz in the movie Night and Day? Tom Cruise. Yes. In which decade was the Social Security Act signed into law? Uh, 40s. 50s, no. 60s? No, no, no. Uh, Eddie Murphy played the lead in a in the film A Vampire in Where? Brooklyn. Yes. What was the first food to be intentionally microwaved? Um, microwave? Meatloaf? No. Chicken? No. <laughs> <laughs> what was the interesting feature of the evil Count Rugen in A Princess Bride? Repeat. What was the interesting feature of the evil Count Rugen in A Princess Bride? He had six fingers on his hand. Yes! One, two, three, four, five, correct! Nice move. Yeah, that was a good one right there. I forgot about that one. I was like, I can't remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've only seen the movie once, so that's why. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that was was your uh, your white whale, so to speak. I hadn't seen it in forever, so... I, I, well, and it was it was good. It, it, you know, there's a lot of movies that people tell you that are old. You really ought to check it out. It's a classic, and it doesn't hold up, but A Princess Bride does. Yes, exactly. Steve? Still, still haven't seen it. You still haven't seen it? Nope. And well, I know I should because I drew the giants in it. Yes. <laughs> I'm never going to see it. <laughs> well, this is going to be a little more difficult beat mix then. Oh, great. Hey, Steve, are you ready? Oh, yes. 
<laughs> Which American Idol judge played bass for Madonna throughout her album Like Randy a Prayer? Yes. The Bermuda Triangle is located in what ocean? Atlantic. Yes. What year of the mid 2000s did YouTube first launch? 2005. Yes. I've been down that wormhole or rabbit <laughs> hole ever since. <laughs> Who starred opposite of Cameron Diaz in the movie Night and Day? Oh, it's a classic. That oh, geez. Uh, Tom Cruise. Yes. In what yes, decade? Uh, in yeah. what decade was the Social Security Act signed into law? Seventies? No. Eighties? No. Yeah. Which way should I go? Nineties? No. Damn it. Wow. Ed- Eddie Murphy played the lead in the film A Vampire in Where? Brooklyn. Yes. What was the first food to be intentionally microwaved? Popcorn. Yes. What was the interesting feature of the evil Count Rugen in A Princess Bride? <laughs> Andre the Giant. No. Billy Crystal. No. Yeah. They wore tights. No. Which planet is named after the Roman, Roman god of agriculture? Saturn? Yes. One, two, three, wow. four, five, six, seven. You win seven to five. Yes. Wow. wow. Sorry, Scott. Oh, all good. Hey, can I yeah. give a quick shout out to my daughter that just graduated from Graham Capas in high school on Friday? Yeah. Wow. GK represents. Yeah. <laughs> give her a shout. Nice. What's there her name? Go, buddy. Her name's Erin. I love her. Oh, hey, awesome. congrats Dude. on the graduation, Erin. Yeah. Nice. Did, did you buy her a car? <laughs> <laughs> You Are you sure? I barely afford my own. I'm okay. kidding. You see those stories or something? Like, hey, graduated. They a brand new car. I'm like, oh man, I better start saving now. Yeah, expectations oh, right there. Right. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you know, I mean, oh, I thought you were taking a shot at me because that was because that was Joey's graduation. No. <laughs> I didn't mean it as a shot to that. Wow, I was like, okay, I just, you know. Mr. Humble Brag. Well, we talked about it on the show. That's why I thought you were taking a shot at me. You guys, like 40 years ago. I know. In high school, like that was like 20 years ago. (laughs) Yeah, I know. You guys guys gave me grief for doing it. And then, of course, you gave me grief when I didn't buy Sarah any car. And it was like, I got her. I don't know what I got her. It was nowhere near a car. I can't believe you didn't buy your daughter a car after all. Good, DJ. Yeah, I know. I'm a horrible father. (laughs) No, I was just curious because sometimes you hear about those and you see this post like congratulations here's a car and i'm like wow that did <laughs> yeah. not happen in my household not in my house either and uh, yeah well, it was kind of i think if i remember it was sort of like the stick to make sure that he stayed in high school it's like you know if you stay all the way because sometimes you he'd be like i don't know what i'm going here for what's the point and like okay well uh how about a new car yeah, before i forget oh yeah ah oh, damn it so thank you to the texter steve you didn't play your song <laughs> oh thanks texter uh, they're but, against you there, BJ. Dude, I that uh, family, uh, my wife's side of family, that, that someone had a birthday, and, and they got a car for their birthday. Like, they were just old enough now to drive. Oh, wow. Man, that is such an adrenaline rush, because she did not know. Oh, and that's so amazing, all of a sudden, man. Like, she went off to some other little spot in the house. They rolled this car in the backyard, like a garage little spot. Like, they have a, a big backyard area where they could do this. And, and they, the ribbon on the hood. Oh, oh that's wow. That's the best part. Oh. Like, right out of a commercial. I swear, I think I was more pumped for her than she was. And she was very pumped. <laughs> I'm, like, just, like, shaking. I'm like, this is, I've never been around someone that's got a car for a gift. It was so cool. That's awesome. Did somebody go, it's a new car? <laughs> they should have, right? <laughs> Uh, fi- uh, a couple of the questions that nobody got. Uh, the decade that the Social Security Act was signed into law. Thank it should 30s. only be two decades. It should either be the 30s or the 20s. I think the 30s, though, right? And it is the 30s, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was after the Great Depression is when they were like, we better come up with something to get people to realize we're going to take care of them. Yeah, totally. And then the interesting feature of the evil Count Rugen in A Princess Bride. Scott knew this. He had six fingers on one hand. Oh. Aha! Uh-huh. Yeah, and that was his defining feature, and... Steve, if you would have seen the movie, you would know this. Well, you know, I'm so sad that I didn't spend two hours of my life watching this movie so you get this question right. I know, you still won anyway, so congrats. And this texture says, Princess Bride is stupid and way overrated. All right, I'm going to block that texter. Yeah. I'm going to unblock him. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, it's definitely the kind of humor that you may not like, Steve. That's the thing. You know, if you don't like Raisin Arizona or uh, any Coen Brothers movies, things, things of that nature, I you probably won't like a Princess Bride. I didn't hate Raising Arizona. Was that Nicolas yeah. Cage, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of some other but, ones uh, that, that that I know you thought uh, there was a... 
a Matt Damon movie, Burn Before Reading, I think it was, you didn't like. Was it fair of that? Fan of yeah. that one. Is it like Jojo Rabbit? And- uh, yeah, I would say there's, I mean, I, there's this it's Jojo <laughs> Rabbit like humor in there, though Jojo Rabbit got serious as well. Yeah, I didn't get to yeah. that point. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a complete satire, that movie. That movie really, yeah, that got deep quick. Yeah, I mean, you really can't go wrong with Nicolas Cage, though. So, like, Raising Arizona was a surefire. Are you sure you can't go wrong uh, with Nicolas Cage in a movie? Are you, you sure about go, that? Yeah, you can go wrong with Nick Cage in a lot of movies. Yeah, I think maybe... Well, at yeah. least in the movies I've I've chose to watch that are Nicolas Cage films, I've enjoyed, like Ghost Rider. Oh, you shut up. You know, he's just trolling, Rev. Don't yeah, I am not. I saw it yeah, in theaters, you know, and the, I thought it was entertaining. Ghost Rider is a pile, okay? Please. A, a pile of cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> A pile of cinematic masterpiece. You know what? All I'm right, going to go with that. I we should it was put... fun. You guys are all just haters. You look. You just like your kind of movies, okay? Yeah, fun ones. And I and I'm not so. And look, <laughs> you probably one of those movies stoned. Let's be honest. I don't think I did see that one. I think I was sober for that. Really? I can't remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the timeline. I care. I, when did that movie come out? That's I, Ghost oh, Rider 2007. I, yeah, come on. Well, yeah, mean, yeah, you know, you, were, you hadn't met, hadn't met your wife yet, right? Yeah, it's a good chance that I wasn't it, sober. You're right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, because when you don't like good movie, when you like uh, movies it's a that are okay, Burning Man on a motorcycle. How could you go wrong? Yeah, that's what we. I asked. know. That's what us, we were asking. Us Marvel fans have been asking that since day one. So there you go. Congratulations, Steve. The <laughs> Princess Bride is a classic. Come on, Steve, get it together. Next text. Jesus Christ, Steve. Andre the Giants in the Princess Bride. Get with it. I know. I know. That's, you're that's always, <laughs> always, anytime yeah. anyone finds out I haven't seen the Princess Bride, that is because the, they know I love wrestling. So they're like, a wrestler was in the movie. How could you not see it? I do, yeah, and I don't think that's a good enough reason for you to do anything in life is because somebody from some other genre happens to be in something. You know, I mean, it yeah. still could be really... Unad- I wouldn't recommend this movie to you. I know it's a classic, I, and I said it holds up, but as your friend, knowing you, I wouldn't make you watch this movie, which is the difference between you and I. You want me to watch bad movies, except for Pootie Tang, which you were right about. <laughs> but I I mean, I was just based on... I thought it was a fun movie, and, I, and you you agreed. And I'll go see movies all the time if there's like a band. Like, like The Offspring was an Idle Hands. Yep. Granted, that's a great movie, because it has Jessica Alba in it. But at the same time, nice. it was just one of those things of like i originally saw that movie just because i wanted to see dexter right i mean i remember watching they live that that silly sci-fi movie with roddy piper's in it i would have never watched they live if roddy piper wasn't in it. they did a a they did a remake of rollerball which was terrible but it had slipknot in one scene yep so that's why i went to go see it oh yeah no absolutely but but i i just I, I, i couldn't get past just the whole Robin Hood. Is there, is there, if or, so, or Princess Bride, whatever. Who would have to be? They're thinking of doing a remake, which some people think is sacrilege. Uh, so if they did a remake of Princess Bride, who has to be in it for you to see it? Jennifer Lopez. Okay, there we go. And The Rock. We know. And The Rock. Oh, wait, you need, both of, you need both of them or one of them? Both, and there needs to be a love scene. <laughs> wow. That is. Whoa, that escalated. No. Sure that got okay. weird, huh? My bad. Yeah, I'm just saying that that's really specific what you needed in that movie to see it. That's a lot. I don't think we're going to be able to make that happen. One time says, I know why you enjoyed Ghost Rider, Steve. Two words, Eva Mendes. Like that, yeah, those are two good words. <laughs> yeah, see, that's you know, that's the other problem is is that, yeah, if Steve does happen to like an actress, then it doesn't matter how good or bad the movie is. Because you're, like, you're all about Jessica Alba and you're watching that new cop show she's in. And I don't know well, how. We kind of, uh, we just kind of stopped oh, watching that. Oh, you we're, stopped watching that? See, even Jessica couldn't save it? No one can save that one. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. LA's finest, but it's just like there's better things out there. It's, it, like, that's the thing. I don't want to watch anything where I go, it's okay. It's just you know another what I mean? cop drama. With, yeah. You know, yeah. That's the thing. It's like, oh, I get it. You are in LA and you're the finest. And Steve, I, I bet, look, you probably heard it and said, like, well, Jessica Jessica Alba is fine, so they're not. it's not false advertising. Oh, I never <laughs> even put that connection in there. You're absolutely right. That's probably yeah. why they did that. Two hot yeah. chicks fighting crime. They're the fine. Oh, man. See, oh, you didn't even see that? Now oh, you I, realize it. Wow. So you, you, you have been watching it without even knowing the reason they hooked you. I just thought they were really good cops, BJ. Aww. I just thought they were really good cops. Okay. Oh, uh, someone's got a hot take though. It says uh, Ghost Rider better than Titanic. Yeah, I won't disagree with that. 
I've never uh, seen Ghost Rider, so I have no uh, idea. Ah, look, I, as much as I want to hate on Danny, I've seen Titanic, and you really can't say that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you really can't. I mean, for what Titanic is supposed to be, it's much better. If if Ghost Rider did as good of a job at what it was supposed to be as Titanic did, Ghost Rider would be a really good movie. Titanic yeah. is doing what it's supposed to do. Texter. Yeah. I'm just going mean, to be now, you may not, man on this. Like, yeah. Texter. I'm not a big fan of what they're supposed to do with Titanic, <laughs> but they did what they were supposed to do. All right, uh, Conan O'Brien. Really great if they didn't. And the boat just sailed oh, and, and oh, landed yeah. and everyone lived happily ever after. And then it just ends with James Cameron just giving a middle finger to the people watching. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Just when you thought you knew the ending. F yeah. off, viewers. Yeah, buddy. So Conan O'Brien, as you know, he's done with his show. Uh, um, I believe last night was his last show, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is his final week. Oh, it's the final week. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I know he wanted Seth Rogen to be part of the final show or final week. So there you go. Um, and he's not a pot smoker. But last night on Conan's show, he actually did smoke a joint. Now, why did he decide to do this? Oh, you're going to hear what happened at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So Conan O'Brien down to his final week on TBS and then uh, no more Conan show, which I, have to, I haven't really watched a whole lot of the shows, to be honest with you, but I am kind of interested in, in this last week. Man, I love Conan O'Brien. I remember going to college, in high school, just watching his late, late night show when he was on, like, super late at night. And then he obviously went on to replace, like, Carson and Leno and all that kind of stuff. And when he went to TBS, I thought, oh, I'll give it a shot. I've never watched a single episode of his TBS show. And I was a big <laughs> fan of Conan O'Brien. I was like, eh, let's never get around to it. Which is so funny because there was the whole Jay Leno and Conan thing, like, feud of, like, what people wanted to keep Conan. And I understand that there was, like, people were rallying behind Conan and stuff like that. But then I feel like all the people that rallied behind Conan never watched Conan after right. that. Which right. is, like, I don't, I never, it never made sense to me. I love Conan. Just not enough to watch his show. Right. I listen to his podcast. I mean, I do everything. I'm, I'm a Conan enthusiast. And I and I, I happen to think it's a conspiracy because I really think they wanted Jimmy Fallon in there. So that, But they had to, you know, you never want to replace one big guy with the next somebody. You don't want to be the next one to replace. So he was kind of like the palate cleanser. He was the ginger. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh hey. X-Files music. Wow. I can't dang it. I, yeah. it, it. Even this morning I drove in, I'm like, you know, I'm going to find the X-Files music and I'm loading it into my box for any time yeah. that we might need it. And what did I do? Not that. Nice job, buddy. Yep. Failure. So you're not, you're not, you're not doing that. You're not watching Conan. Uh, and I might watch videos. I don't think I, I don't know if I'll actually watch any of the shows uh, or even even DVR them. I usually I could easily DVR them. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? A terrible job hyping up a man's a, t- a television legend. I mean, some would say an icon on television, and we're just like, I don't know if I'll get around to it. Sure, it's well, a classic uh, couple of shows. Who cares? Yeah, I know it's horrible. Uh, uh, but um, well, Steve, you got to watch the last episode, the very last one. See if it hooks you, so you can go back to the beginning. What if I do watch the last episode? I'm like, man, this Conan show, the way he has it formatted and everything, the guests and the bits. This is amazing. And they go yeah. back and start just obsessively watching the TN- TBS show. Yeah. That one, wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. TBS. Wouldn't the, yeah, wouldn't be the first time you've done that. No. Um, but uh, th- this was a, cr- uh, a really cool moment because he had Seth Rogen as a guest last night. And, you know, as we know, Seth loves smoking pots. He even got his own brand and his own, his own company, really. Yeah, in Canada, so, man. I think it's branching out now to the U.S. as well. 
And Conan mentioned that he's not a pot smoker. And then Seth was like, all right, well, you know what? How about you try this? Pulled a joint right out of his pocket. And if you, if I'm to believe Conan, he was not prepared for any of this, if I'm to believe it. I mean, it's hard to believe because of all the pre-interviewing guests or whatever. But in this particular instance, I, I feel like he's genuine. He's like, wow, did not know this was going to happen. Uh, and Conan decided, okay, I'm going to take a hit as well as, uh, you know, his co-host, his partner, Andy Richter, did as well. You own a weed company. What would you want me smoking? <laughs> Pulls out of his pocket. <laughs> One hit of that weed, and I think you'll have a really good time. And okay, yeah. Uh, just give it a light and a light. <laughs> all right, all right, tell me, and then you just give it right in there. Huh? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy with what just happened. <laughs> I, I forgot I applied for a job at Target. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, you know, it's interesting to watch the, the different people. I feel like this wasn't Andy's first go around. Andy would knew exactly what he was doing. He took a pretty big inhale and kept it for quite some time. I, I was impressed no cough out of Conan. Because usually you take your first hit ever or, you know, I mean, because he says he hasn't really done it. I usually cough. You usually go a little too far. Yeah, but, but, he, said, but he didn't say he's never done it. Or never smoked cigarettes or cigars. Oh, that's a good point. Too. Yeah, right. So he probably, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if here he is on doing his show. He probably barely inhaled it. He probably pulled up Bill Clinton. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like <laughs> just just enough to, for the show's purposes, but not enough to where he's like going to be laying on the couch, forgetting that he has a, a a show to host. Yeah, Andy. On the other hand, I watched Andy, and he was like, he was like, I'm going to fully enjoy this. That'd be great I to was, go back to Andy. He's just got like a bag of McDonald's, and he's just like hanging out. Oh, oh man. man, cheese doesn't a pint of ice cream. I think that. Oh, I think Conan did the face like after he inhaled it. He did a similar face to Elon Musk, like that famous meme of him just like holding the joint with his eyes all funny. I think that's what he was trying to do too. Oh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, that's a pretty big moment, and uh, you know, I. I I, you know, I, I, a live television show letting this happen. Um, I, I don't know where they film Conan, uh, but I guess it must be legal wherever wherever he is. I don't know if he's L.A. or New York. Yeah, no uh, rules, man. It's his final week. He can do whatever the F he wants. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Brick yeah. Law, brick that is a good point. And I imagine it's in California. Yeah, it is yeah, in California. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was cool with, with Seth Rogen because he Conan tried to go on with the interview, and then Seth Rogen was like, I'm just so happy with what's happened right now. I mean, he was just he was delighted at the fact that everybody was taking a hit on that show, which is, of course, you know, I mean, uh, why wouldn't Seth be happy with that? That's his life. Now, it's the lukewarm topic of the day. So, yeah, Conan, on uh, his last week of shows, sh smoked a joint with Seth Rogen, and that happened last night on his show, and Seth was very, very happy. Was, she said, I'm just so happy with what happened. So, based on this, we want to know, what was that moment in your life where you thought, man, I am so happy with just what happened, man? 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. What was that moment in your life where you thought, I'm so happy with what just happened? 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. Your calls and texts after the pumpkins on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you haven't checked out the video on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com, you'll get to see Conan O'Brien smoking a joint with Seth Rogen on his show last night. It's Conan's final week, so he's pretty much doing what he wants. And when this happened, Seth Rogen said, quote, I'm so happy with just what happened. And based on this, we want to know, what was that moment in your life where you thought, man, I'm so happy with what just happened? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Paul and Bremerton, you are on the rock. Greetings, fellow each holes. Hey, hey, Paul, what you got for us today, buddy? Well, I was at uh, the Blues Festival with my dad, and it was the very first time that him and I smoked pot together. And, man, did I get tore up. I can imagine. How old were you? Four. I was uh, 21 <laughs> at the time. <laughs> All right. 22, maybe. Yeah, and, but, what, uh, and what's dad? About 20 years older than you, pretty much? It's Because that's a cool moment, I suppose. Oh, it was a great moment. Um, just him and I doing the bonding. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, I don't really remember the concert. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun night. 
it was epic. I mean, 120 degrees out there at the gorge. and Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So was that the first time that you smoked with your pops? That was the very first time I smoked with my dad. So did he just, like, pull it, like, say, hey, look what I got. <laughs> Do you want a party? Or like, how did that even, like... No, they were they were uh, in the back of a jeep, and I just happened to have a cigarette, and I walked around, and I'm like, "Hey, Dad, you know, how about a toke?" He goes, "No." I'm like, "Hey, I smoke cigarettes, and pot is a lot safer for you than cigarettes. So how about a toke?" And he passed me the pipe. He goes, "Don't tell your mom, or she'll divorce my ass." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome! Oh, oh nice. That's very very cool. That that you know that, that I I mean it's cool because yeah you know you realize your kid's a man at that point you know twenty one years old you know what the heck he gave I, what, what I, he, could, I don't think I could ever ask my parent hey you want to smoke some pot with me I don't think it would, I I would just be I, I, it would just be more of a headache than it would be worth <laughs> you know because all these questions I'm like oh my gosh I was just asking if you want to smoke some pot like yeah well when, when it's like one hundred and twenty degrees outside and you're drinking beers and then you have that first toke oh yeah. You're done. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So did you guys ever smoke up again? Um, or we just we oh, just lost, lost them. them. Uh, yeah, we did. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's funny. That's that's I feel like, you know, it used to be like, did you ever have a drink your first drink with your dad, Steve? I mean, no. I think, you know, because of what pot's been in our lives where it's been illegal for a long time and, you know, it, it was it, it had all this anti you know, this propaganda against it. I feel like it's like a first beer kind of thing or a first drink, but you never you never had a, a drink with your dad either. No, I mean besides smoking mass with my dad, I've never done anything else. No, no oh, yeah. Yeah. Right there. I mean you can't have a beer at that point, you know. Once you once you go, you know, Heisenberg, you can't go back. I, what about a Jack Daniels with mom? I have had pina coladas with mom. Okay, this is she's only recently taken on the Jack Daniels thing. So if I ever go back home where I can just sit down with mom, you bet your ass I'm going to have some Jack Daniels with her. Nice. But I remember it was, I can't remember whose wedding it was, but it was I was in college, and then finally I looked at my mom, and I'm like, I know my mom loved pina coladas, and I'm like, mom. Want to have a pina colada with your son? She's like, you know it. And so that's <laughs> <what> the- <laughs> Oh, oh, I like, love that. It was just silly because I hear we are drinking like the super just ridiculous strength of pina colada with the umbrella. But I didn't care. I was drinking with mom. Yeah. So of course I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be like, hey, mom, you want to do some shots? Like, I knew this was the drink. That was her go-to drink. So I'm going to drink it with her. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's that's really cool. Let's go to Nicole in Auburn. Nicole, you are on the rock. Good morning. Good morning, Nicole. How about you? What was that moment where you were like, oh, I'm just so happy with what just happened? Like, I'm, or, Hello? Hello. Yeah, hello. 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 Okay. My son. My son came to me and he said, "Hey, mom, let's get matching tattoos." Nice. Ooh! Wow. And I said, well, what, do you want, what do you want to get? And so we got. We each got one cool bean. So together, we're cool beans. Aww. That's really. That's slightly adorable. <laughs> yeah. Extremely adorable. Yeah, <laughs> that really is. That's. Uh, I love that. That's. That's awesome, Nicole. Steve, is that something that you think you'll? Uh, You'll do. I mean, that is probably something that you know Tater Tot's going to be noticing is how inked up you are. And do you think someday that'll be a daddy and daughter moment where you both get matching tattoos? I would do that in a heartbeat, of course. But I, I, I you know, who knows what her direction will be when it comes to tattoos? If she's going to think they're cool or not? But well, that's probably why you should get it done now before she has a say. Well, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she wants a, a Kraken logo, doesn't she? She already she's, got one. Yeah, she's got one on the oh, ankle. Oh, that's right. Uh, and she's got one on her uh, bicep that says, Dad is awesome. There we so, go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to Tyler and Ken. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Tyler, you are on the rock. Hey, good morning, guys. Morning, Tyler. How about you? What was that moment you thought, oh, I'm so happy with what just happened? Uh, well, yesterday I got the phone call that I got my dream job. Oh, uh, whoa, congrats. so this this was just yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I turned wrenches for a living, and uh, yesterday I uh, got the phone call that instead of uh, working on just kind of, you know, basic run-of-the-mill, everyday kind of cars, I, I am now moving into the luxury exotic world, uh, something that uh, I never thought would be possible. It's actually really hard to get into Wow, dude, that is fantastic. Because I know a lot of folks that want to get into that world when it comes to car stuff. And uh, yeah. man, congratulations! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you? So yeah, what exactly. is your? What's your? What's your favorite exotic car to work on? You got you got you got a favorite brand, favorite type? 
Uh, I'll let you know when I start to really getting my hands on them. Um, I've always been a fan of, you know, uh, the Ferraris and uh, oh, Lamborghinis and all that kind of stuff. But wow. uh, can't really tell you too much because I haven't checked good. and quit my other job yet. <laughs> You, oh, okay. Then. You want us to call them right now? We could quit on the air. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> it is a service we provide, uh, which we've just started providing you. now. Yeah, it's a new thing we're doing. Yeah, uh, if I'll you want us to quit for you, you let us know, Tyler. If you want us to quit for you, we'd be glad to, because we might be able to, you know, soften the sting a little bit. <laughs> I'll give the number to Rev. Oh, I love this plan. <laughs> Wait, for real? Would you all really right. quit on the air? All right, I'll listen, I'm I'll, I'll, I'm going to put uh, I'll put Tyler on hold. Uh, let's see what you know. Let's let's see if this happens. Yeah. Rev, you got him on hold. See if he wants us to do it. And whenever says, whenever he wants us to do it. I mean, it doesn't have to be today. Obviously, it has to be today. Or we're never doing it, BJ. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. It's all right. Now I mean, or never. Tyler, there's some rules I didn't know about with our new thing that we're doing. It's, it's our new business that apparently it all it can only happen today. It's going to be a short business, Steve. If today is the only day we do this, these, these are the rules that we have. <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. This is probably why a lot of our businesses don't succeed. Uh, all right, so we got a uh, we got a customer that just left an insane tip at a restaurant. The tip was sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I'll tell you all about this at seven forty eight on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another listener question. How do I rebuild my credit after filing bankruptcy? Uh, you rebuild it, you know, one creditor at a time by making your payments on time to, on your on your rent or your mortgage, by continuing to make car payments at, on a car that you keep during your case. Um, you can also, as I said, uh, you can almost always get a credit card almost immediately after filing bankruptcy. Sometimes it's a secured card and it'll almost always have a really high interest rate on it, but you can get a small balance credit card and you know, charge a tank of gas or, or a dinner once a month on that and make the payment, pay it off every month, and that'll help you build a credit history one creditor at a time and will help you rebuild your credit over time. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.